Amen. 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 We greet you in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 It's, it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. I, I'm sitting back here and I'm looking out at you guys and I'm like, y'all, y'all look sad. Y'all need to smile, butter up, buttercup, do something. Because God has been good to you. Amen. Amen. You should be glad that God woke you up early this morning, started you out on your way, put clothes on your back, food on your table, gave you your right frame of mind. You should be praising an awesome God right now. Amen. Amen. Like Not like somebody just stole your dog or something, you know. Amen. Amen. God is good to us. Amen. And I don't know about you, but he's been mighty good to me this week. Amen. Amen. Because I had a week. Amen. Amen. I thank God for being God and who he is. Amen. As always, thanking uh, these two tower of powers behind me, Reverend Emmons and Reverend Majors. Thanking God for the deacons and deaconess, all the officers of this church. And I thank God for you, his people. Amen. amen, amen. Sister Jones and her, her group back there. You know, this week has, has, like I said, it has been a week. Amen. 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 But I went into this week with one thing on my mind. I'm going to be happy. Amen. No matter what come my way, I'm not going to let nothing stop me from being happy in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Ain't no problem too big that God can't handle. Amen. And if you think God can't handle it, see how you doing and you see you ain't doing all that great either. Amen. 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 Uh, amen. We're going to go to Psalms, the first division. Psalms don't have chapters, y'all. Amen. Psalms don't have chapter. It has division. Amen. So we're going to go to the first division of Psalms. Verses 1 through 3, very familiar piece of scripture. A, amen. I thank God for my wife that continues to stand at, stand at our side. Amen. amen. Y'all know what I say. I found her on the playground, and since I found her on the playground, might as well keep her. Amen. 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 The Bible says when a man findeth a wife, he does what? Find a good thing. And I found my good thing. Amen. Amen. Like the man said, my honey dropped my chocolate dew is all for me. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. I don't mind saying it because I'm going home with her. Amen. 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 I, 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 I got one wife ain't looking for no girlfriend. Don't need now. Amen. Amen. Y'all know I'll say anything up here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, first division of Psalm verses 1 through 3. Amen. If you have it, and if you can, stand for the reading of God's word for those that can. And the word of God said, blessed, blessed. is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. Verse 2, but he delight in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he what? He meditates what? Day and night. Verse 3, he is like a tree planted by streams of water that yield its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not what? Wither. In all that he does, he prospers. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise your holy name even as we stand here ready to preach your word, Lord. We, we thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will do. Now, Father God, we ask that these, these words may help someone say, what must I do to be saved? And they can be a light unto their pathway. Lord, we forever give you the praise, glory, and honor in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let all God's people say, Amen. 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 There are times when we make plans for our lives. We look at things that we see in the present and then look towards the future. People tell us we better have a plan 
for life. Then there are others that ask the question, what are you going to do? I had plans for my future when I was in high school. That was to be a lawyer. Then plans changed when our first child came into being. Then that plan changed because then I had to get a job to take care of the family. Then that plan changed and began to change even more when there were no jobs and I had to make a plan how I was going to live on the street. I associated with many people that were bad and good. Then one day, after living in such a way, the plan changed it again when I met Christ for myself. Then the plan changed even more when the Lord told me to, 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 that he was going to change my life forever. Then the plan changed again when he told me to leave the job I had been on for many years and go into a, a, a place where didn't nobody know me to pastor. Guess what? The plan changed again when I came home and took care of my mother. But then the plan changed one more time when I came here to Greater Second Baptist Church. A man with a plan. That's the title for this sermon today. Oftentimes we think back on all the things that we had planned for our life. We were going to live in this type of home and have this type of job and marry that type of person and have that many kids. Looking back on your life, you may say, didn't none of those things or half of those things happen? But realize and understand there's a plan for your life. The psalm does not identify the author by name, but it's widely associated with David. The first psalm is a suitable introduction to the book. Might properly design the two ways in which a person can live. It contrasts opposites of good and bad. Some people say that many of us will make good decisions and many of us will make some bad choices. But when you look at your plan, how is it working in your life? The psalmist says that the nature that we choose will determine whether our life is fulfilling or if it's messed up. Yeah. Desiring to indicate sharp distinctions between contrasting views and opinions. The one thing I've learned for quite some time is that plans don't always work out the way we want them. Plans will either seem almost impossible or that we get it too easy. Sometimes when you look at a plan, you have to understand everything that goes into it. A wise person once told me, that a plan must be realistic, measurable, and attainable. Realistic, measurable, and attainable. Today we gather to reflect on the divine wisdom found in the Psalms. This chapter, this division serves as a beacon guiding toward a life filled with blessing, purpose, and prosperity. Yes, and that's what we're going to focus on. We're going to focus on a life filled with all these things, yet none of these things. Point number one, do you see the plan working in your life? Do you see a plan working in your life? There's a contrast between believers and non-believers. Psalms begin with a stark contrast of the righteous and the wicked. The righteous are those who have looked at the plan of God and have decided to walk according to his word. And then there are those that, that will refuse to live according to God's plan. It starts off a blessed man. A blessed man. Many people 
think that, that they're blessed because of this and they're blessed because of that. But here in the psalm, the psalm says that the man is blessed. In other words, he's saying that the man is happy. The man is happy with how he's living right now. If you're a child of God and you are not happy how you're living, you might want to check your pedigree and see whose side you're on. Because when I laid down last night, I was happy to go to sleep in the Lord. But when I got up early this morning, I was even happier that the Lord woke me up to a brand new day and started me on my way. See, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm so blessed I can't take it. I'm so blessed because God ha ha has given me my heart desire. Giving me a beautiful wife that has loved me for 38 long years. Giving me kids that, that, that act halfway right sometimes. Amen. Giving me grandkids and, and, and all the sort. And you know what? My lineage ain't finna stop because I'm finna be a great grandpa, y'all. So I'm blessed. And what the Lord is doing in my life. And a blessed man is happy in the Lord. He see God moving in and out of his life. If you don't see the Lord working in your life, what is wrong? Because the Bible said, blessed is the man who walks. Now, 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 that's an action word. You walking. I remember going with my father one day. I was so, I was so uh, eager. I said, I asked my father, I said, can I go with you? And he said, do you know where we're going? I didn't care where we was going. So long as I could walk at my father's side. He said, come on, we walking. I said, all right. I'm thinking he walking to the grocery store. And that's just a block and a half. We passed the store. We passed my school. We passed downtown. We was all the way on the south side of Chicago. And, and back then, you didn't, you didn't ask where we going. You just went. Yeah. See, so those were some type of questions you didn't ask back then. All right. All right. But we walked and walked. We walked for six hours straight. And then I believed every word them folks used to tell us. Back down in Mississippi, you will walk two country miles, stop, get you a break, and walk three more. This man could do it. But he was walking. And when you walk in the presence of the Lord, you feel happy. You feel good. You know what God is doing in your life. There is no doubt. There is no uncertainty. You are assured that so long as you walk with God, everything is going to be all right. Blessed is the man. There are those that have to meditate. On the Lord. It said, blessed uh, is the man who walks in the, in the counsel, not in the counsel of the wicked. When you get, or when you start living for Christ, you're going to lose those folks that don't want to stop doing what you was doing. They're they, they not going to call you every day and ask you what you're doing or, or what time we meet up. You're going to lose more friends than you realize. But God is going to bless you because if you stick with the Lord, he'll give you more than what you had. And it's going to be a better quality of people to hang around. All right, all right. I, don't, I, I don't talk to any of my old friends no more. Uh, they don't pick up the phone and call me like they used to. We, we don't meet up. Uh, 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 to party all night long no more because they don't want to go to breakfast and they don't want to go to bed when I go to bed I go to bed at 9.30 and, and that's the plan every night I'm getting in the bed I'm going to be in my bedroom at 9.30 I don't care who in the house my wife will say your son out there I say well tell him I'm going to bed I'm gone when a person walks he must have a plan to embrace where he's walking. 
the word of God, he must accept that he must live better than he did on yesterday. The plan is not to be the same on tomorrow, but the plan is to be better than you were on yesterday. John 4 and 10 said, Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God who had it, who it, it is that saying to you, give me a drink, you would not have asked him. He would have given you living water. Now, now, what he's saying here is, is that you really don't understand who you're talking to. And, and if you did, you, 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 you wouldn't be questioning what I'm asking you to do. God is asking you to live according to to his word, to walk day by day. Don't live in the counsel of the ungodly. Don't listen to the people that's going to pull you away from God. You must live for the Lord. Because God is the one that is going to be your sustainer in this life that you live right now. How are you living? Do you have a plan in your life? And do you notice the plan? Yes, sir. Last year we made some great strides. But then we had plans that ran into a roadblock. And sometimes coming up a, a, on a stumbling block is good for you. Because it'll help slow you down when you moving too fast. Uh -huh. We live in a time in an age of grat instant gratification and everybody want what they want when they want it right now. You know some things are better, better to get when you have waited and, and had some anticipation about its arrival. But not today. People today want, want it when they want it and how they want it. John is saying to the Jews that this living water is a spring, a fountain, running stream that is opposite to stagnant water. Yes, sir. If you're stagnant in Christ, there's a problem. Yes, Lord. A stagnant church, hear me church, cannot survive. All right. A stagnant church cannot survive. When we are not working together to make God's plan come true, when we're not putting in the effort in the long haul and, you, and, we, and we don't want to do things, guess what? A stagnant church kills. I don't know if you ever drink stagnant water. It's not very good. It's bitter. <clears throat> Hard to swallow. And you'll spew it out your mouth before you realize it. That's right. Realize today that the psalmist paints a vivid picture of a righteous person that is a tree planted by streams of water, yielding its fruit in season. See, sometimes you plan for things to happen, but they don't happen when you want them. God make them happen when he know you ready to handle what comes next. But if you are living for Christ, you can be patient and watch God work things out in your life. Sometimes you just got to sit down and wait. That's right. One who does not have a, a, a reverence for how God's plan is in their life, soon walk away and listen to other people. This part where it said the counsel of the wicked, those are the ones that's not living in God. Should nobody have to ask you, are you a Christian? They should see you a Christian. It doesn't take three Bibles under one arm and four commentaries on another one to tell that you're a child of God. Your speech should change. Your behavior should change. You, you, the way you, you go about doing things should change. If you hurt somebody's feeling, it should, it should hurt you enough to want to go and say, I'm sorry. But a wicked person will refuse. Well, I, they made me say it. Well, they had that coming. That's not how God works. God pictures 
a deliberate and intentional life for the person that's living in his will. A blessed man walks in God. Point number two, a plan has purpose. A plan has purpose. It's my dream to see that center built on that piece of land that we own next door. It's my dream to see God people serving people. It's my dream to provide things in the name of an almighty God. It's my plan to work it out to make it happen. In order for all that to happen, we got to know why we're doing what we're doing. It will make no difference about putting up a building that doesn't have a purpose. So many buildings have been built in the name of the Lord, but the purpose was fell by the wayside. So many churches are not surviving because they have gone outside the will of God. We've gone to a more entertainment system of worship rather than letting the word of God build up and make you strong. A song cannot save, but a, a statement of faith in God and Jesus Christ will. A song will make you feel good for a while, but the plan that God has in your life can last a lifetime. It must be a purpose. As a therapist, one of the things that I tell many people when they come to see me is that everyone must have a purpose for life. There are too many people living today talking about, I don't know my purpose in life. I don't know my purpose in the church. We can't put everybody on the usher board. We got other auxiliaries that need able-bodied people. We can't put everybody in the pulpit. Half of y'all couldn't stand in no way. Can't put everybody on the deacon or deaconess board. The plan is what God has called us to do. He called us to go into the highways and the byways, proclaiming the word of God, telling about his son, Jesus Christ, that came into this world to live and to die. The, the plan is to talk about a risen Savior that sits at the right hand of an almighty God. The plan has to have a purpose. Note the three degrees of progression in sin. You can walk in sin. You can stand in sin. Or you can sit in sin. You can walk as a Christian. You can stand as a Christian. Or you can sit as a Christian. Which purpose is your life. It, it will you have in your life. There used to be a book called. The Purpin, Purpose Driven Life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, written by Rick Warren. Yeah, yeah. And when the Purpose Driven Life book came out. Everybody ran out. To get the book. Uh huh. And, and they said. If this is the plan. Uh, for my life that Rick Warren. Has put out. It's got to work. But there was a problem with that book. That was Rick Warren's plan for a purpose-driven life. Your purpose-driven life is written down in the word of an almighty God. In the books that he sent his prophets and disciples and apostles to give to man. 
If you want to know your purpose and you want to know the plan, you got to get into the word of an almighty God. You, you can't look at your Bible on Monday, say on Wednesday, I'm going to pick my Bible up and then look at it Saturday and say, I'm going to read it and then pick it up on Sunday and you ain't did nothing. What's the purpose for this living you call now? The ungodly are those that manifest in opposition to God. Sinners are those who practice evil on a day-to-day -day basis. The scornful are those who are openly in opposition to the will of God. What's the plan? The plan that the devil has is to kill, steal, and destroy. Remember that all this in your life is intentional. Either living for God or going against the will of the Lord. Ephesians 4, 14 through 15 says, So that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every kind of wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes, verse 15, rather speaking the truth in love. We are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. As a child of God, you should be walking so you can grow. If you are not growing in your faith, that means you sitting down with the scornful. If you are not growing in your faith, that means you're not walking with an almighty God. And this is something that, 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 will, that will bother me for the rest of my day. People always got to complain about what's wrong in their life, but they ain't doing nothing about it to get over it. God did not make us victims. He made us uh, 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 victorious. He, he made us overcomers. But everything that happens in some people's life, they, they, they break down and start crying and acting like it's hopeless. My daughter had a surgery this week. I still went to work. I still came to church. I still did everything that the Lord asked me because that's my purpose. I asked how my child was doing. I spoke to my child. She said, I'm doing better. But guess what? God's work still has to go on. Guess what? Life still has to go on. We heard of the, the, the passing of a, of, of, a, of a good great pastor. Life goes on. Purpose in life still moves. I heard a preacher say, he said, uh, you, you, a pastor will work all the days of his life for God and the church, but after 60 days, he will be a forgotten or a missing memory because the next pastor moved in his seat. The purpose must go on. Yes, this is the assurance of the knowledge. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. This is an intimate relationship between the creator and the created. As the psalmist said, do not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinner, nor sit with scoffers. But he what? Delights in the law of the Lord. And does what? Meditate on it day and night. You know you can meditate anywhere you are. You can meditate in your house. You can meditate in your car. You can meditate on the Lord at work. You can meditate on the Lord at lunchtime. You can meditate picking up the kids from a football game. You can meditate while you cooking dinner. You can talk to God at any time you get ready. But if you're going to meditate, you got to get in his word to know him. 
Last point, and then I'm going to leave you alone. The plan will make you prosperous. The plan will make you prosperous. Verse 3 says, he is like a tree planted by streams of water that yield its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prosper. Yes, Lord. You can prosper in the Lord with $5 in your pocket. Amen. You can prosper in the Lord with one bag of beans and three neck bones. Yeah. You can prosper in the Lord with one suit and two other outfits. Yes, Lord. When we stop thinking materialistic, and start thinking more spiritual, uh -huh. we will see how God is blessing us. Yes, I've never, ever seen a Christian that is serving the Lord be unhappy. Right. I ain't never seen a sad Christian. But you must understand what it means to be prosperous in the Lord. We're not talking about the name it, claim it, snatch it, grab it group, okay? If you go out to Tom Kelly Cadillac and lay your hand on that Cadillac and say you claim it in the name of Jesus, you better have a down payment and a good credit line. Amen. 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 Because that car ain't moving until that you give them something. Amen. Amen. But if it's the Lord's will, you'll get it. Amen. Amen. Uh huh. Come on. God can give me a, a new house. You ask God for a new house, he give you a new house. And this say, and then you say, well, this wasn't the house I wanted. You ain't tell God what kind of house you wanted. You said a new house. And, 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 and this is the one that give me. God, I just want you to send me a man. I don't care. I just want somebody I can spend the rest of my life with. <laughs> then he send you somebody five foot three, buck eyed and crazy looking. <laughs> you ain't tell God what you wanted. Come on, send me a good wife, Lord. I just want to have somebody. And then you get, and let me shut up. You get my deal. Realize. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Uh-huh. When I found my wife on the playground, I said, she pretty. I'm going to keep this one because another pretty girl might not show up. Amen. In a world that is filled with distractions and so many temptations, it's easy to lose sight of whether you're prospering. Uh -huh. The psalmist assures us that those who do the will of God will produce good fruit. Yes, sir. This is to say that good fruit comes, cannot come from a withered tree. A dead fruit don't give good fruit. Amen. Right. Yet in due season, when, it, when the leaves are given, it will produce an abundance so good that you can eat it. Now realize and understand this. You can't pick the fruit too early. You got to wait until it's ripe. To pick, amen? amen. Uh huh. You, you see, you can get green tomatoes and put it on, on, on a countertop and wait three or four days and it will be red enough to eat it. But some, you know, some of us country, we like green tomatoes too, so we'll eat a tomato in any shape, form, or fashion, amen? Yeah. But if you want a red one, uh -huh. you gotta wait. Yeah. Romans 9 and 20 says, But who are you, old man? To answer back to God, what will the mold say to the molder? Why have you made me like this? First of all, realize that everything that God made was what? Good and, and perfect, okay? It, 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 was, it was so good that there was nothing wrong with it. But man will find a way to mess things up. Amen. Amen. Uh-huh. 
in, in, in that, that, that brand new car you may be driving, it's going to be brand new until it gets like you. Ordinary. When you don't care whether somebody eat in it no more or, or drink anything in it. I got an old Cadillac, and I went to Hardee's the other day, and, and I was getting something because my sugar was dropping. I, I needed a sandwich, and I got a cup of coffee, and that man poured all the coffee into my car on me. And I said, got to be more careful. I really said that, y'all. <laughs> and I looked at the man. He said, can I help you? I said, man, give me some napkins. <laughs> and, and then I looked at my car. I said, no, I got peanut butter interior. I got coffee dripping all down into the rug. I'm going to have to really clean this thing this summer. Yeah, and then I thought to myself, if I'd have been in that Escalade, we'd be fighting right now. Uh-huh. But sometimes, we got to be patient. The man was not patient. And he wanted to get it out fast. I don't care about your drive through time. So the next time I went by there, which was yesterday, same man at the window. I said, brother, do me a favor. He said, what's that? I said, make sure that cap on that, on, on that car pass because you pulled it on me the other day. He said, I didn't do that. I said, Benny. I said, we're going to remember we in the Lord right now. If man was to investigate how he living in the Lord, he may find he not doing as well as he thought. The Bible says if a man says he does not sin, then he's a lie. And the truth is not in him. Then the Bible goes on to say in Romans, there is none perfect, no, not one. There is times when you want to be prosperous, you must look what you bring to the table. If you're not bringing good fruit, you can't get nothing good out of it. Fresh apples will make fresh apple pie. God leads his people the way they should go. It is not hard living a Christian life. The hard part is stop doing what you love to do. Many people with addictions struggle every day trying not to use. But if they turn it over to the God, I guarantee that the struggle won't be as hard no more. 2 Corinthians 10 and 13 says that there is no temptation that's common to man that God can't bring you out of. Right. But you know what he's going to do? He's going to use whatever that temptation is and make a way yeah. for you to escape. So if you want to be prosperous, is when the Lord is leading you out of a bad situation, take God's lead and run with it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Many people today refuse to live according to the word of God. Some say it's too hard. Some say I've tried and tried and tried again. Some say that, that God that wouldn't love somebody like me. Uh -huh. To live prosperous in the Lord, you must realize that God loves everything about you. Yes, and that all he wants is the best for you. Yes, and, and guess what? And when you know that God loves you, you can love yourself. 
and when you love yourself, then you can live according to the word of God. You don't need nobody telling you how to live. You'll know how to live by what the word of God said. You know, that's why the Bible said you got to have your own wife. You got to have your own husband. You got to go to work. You got to feed your children. You got to take care of yourself and you got to take care of God's people too. You got to love them. You got to love them. Love those that spitefully misuse you. Talk all manner of evil against you. Love them because they're God's people. Know the purpose that God set out. Prosper in the Lord by doing good. God leads us to living the way he would have us to be righteous and obedient. He guides us in his deliberate plan of how to understand his divine truth. He showed us this by the model of his son. Yes, sir. Jesus Christ came down to fulfill the plan of an almighty God. He wrapped himself up in human flesh, walked with man 33 long years, went through all kinds of situations, but never gave up on the plan of God. He even told his earthly parents, I must do my father's will. And he told his disciples, I got to do it while it's still day. He never gave up on the plan. Even when they led him from judgment hall, to judgment hall. When they beat him for the iniquity of our sin. When they, when they put him on the old rugged cross. He never gave up on the plan of God. Even when he said no man take my life. But I lay it down. And if I lay it down guess what. The plan is to pick it back up again. And if you pick it back up again. Guess what. I'll come and I'll receive you unto myself. That's the plan of an almighty God. For those that believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, the plan is for us to one day stand in front of him and say, I did my best. I tried to do your will, but here I am today. I remember leaving the first church I pastored. And I remember in my heart, I said, that wasn't God's plan. Uh -huh. And I cried for five long years. If you give me one more chance, I promise you, Lord, I'll do your will. I, I, I won't leave no matter what comes my way. I'll stand there until you call me home. See, one, one day I'm going to give up this old rugged body and I'm going to go and be with the Lord. But what I want him to say is, well done, my good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things, but guess what? Come on up. I got something ready for you. I got a house, a mansion with your name on it. You can walk down streets of gold. And guess what? You can sing praises until ceaseless days. A man must have a plan. You must plan to live according to the word of God. You must plan to do God's will. You must plan to stay on the battlefield until the war is over. And you must plan to go home. To be with Jesus. What is your plan. For life. My plan. Is to stay with the Lord. Until I die. My plan. Is to stay here. Until all. Have received. The word of God. The doors of the church is open. You can come by word by letter, candidate, or for a Christian experience, but let us